Hey! Welcome to my gamer room. This is my one-stop shop for gaming, editing, and more gaming. Now, I'm here today to tell you that I got a budget upgrade. Remember that crappy gamer chair that gave me cyclonic back pain a while back? Oh! 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 Well, I sold it, and with the money for that, I was able to get a decent quality microphone, a cheap $5 capture card, and a copy of Crazy Taxi for GameCube. But I had a good amount of money left over from that sale, so I even got this really sweet cameraman. He follows me around everywhere as if I'm on like a reality TV show or something. And the best thing about it is that he makes me feel as if I'm not alone. I guess I might just doze off there for a second. Well, anyways, the real reason I'm here today is because apparently there was a pipe bomb in my mailbox. Or letter bomb. Don't ask how I know this or why I even supposedly have this in the first place, but personally, I think it's a bunch of baloney, so I'm just going to do a funny unboxing about it for Internet Cloud. Wait a second. Pepsi, please! You don't really want to open the package, I swear. Someone is actually out to get you. Okay, and? Pepsi, look. The mailman Carl secretly told me, and so I'm secretly telling you. I don't want to be part of this fiasco, because, you know, the gang could be after me next, but... Come on, just don't open the box. Just call the cops, okay? Ah, so you want me to be completely anonymous, right? Yes! Oh, well, I already had this entire conversation on camera. Why won't you listen to me? You know, these are some pretty absurd allegations. You know what I think? I think you're fear-mongering for clout. Eh, rag shades. These aren't my shades. Well, I got my supposed pipe bomb in one hand and a knife in the other. And you know what they say, Denver Broncos. Cameraman, you're still alive. Most importantly, I'm still alive, but God, that's so weird. Whatever it is, it seems like I'm completely fine. Although, I think the real matter at hand is actually probably trying to find my house. Seems like I might have a long way to go, so I might as well walk it down. What's this? Although it may seem hard, the answer is right in front of you. Hello. Ugh. I am the Ancient Wall of Doom, and I am here to stop you from going any further. Well, that's... redundant. Silence, fool! Now you must answer my riddle if you hope to make it through. Well, it doesn't look like I have much of a choice. Fine then, what's the stupid riddle? If I took the bus terminal 2 down 25 miles to get to the combination Pizza Hut and Taco Bell, which bus terminal would then be the closest to my right? Terminal 7? Brain cancer? Correct! Now look down and receive your consolation prize. Ha, ah, sweet! A copy of Sonic Rush! Wait a minute. The case has the exact same warping as mine. And a small dent in the corner, too. This is my exact copy of Sonic Rush! Great to know this is okay, but now I'm a bit confused. So you're telling me, or I'm telling myself, the explosion didn't damage anything at all, and all it did was just move things away to different locations? God, how lame. I think that's about it. I'm gonna have to go now. No. What do you mean no? I answered your stupid riddle and even got your prize. You fail to recognize that your consolation prize is the key to getting you out of here. What? 
I want you to review the game. How would I do that? There's better things to do with my time. You don't even know how far the explosion went. Your stuff could be miles and miles away. Who knows how far it can be? You have all the time in the world to go looking for them. Plus, you seem pretty unalarmed and not in a hurry. So review the game. Why though? You will soon see my reasonings for doing so. Plus, I also want funny entertainment since my iPhone broke and I haven't been able to see any of my favorite YouTubers. I even sent it to the repair shop like a week ago, and I haven't gotten it back yet. Well, I have a few minutes to spare, I guess. And I mean, there's not much that I can do since I have to get past you. And I'm gonna be honest, I just kind of hate you. So, without further ado, I guess by unpopular demand, here comes my review of Sonic Rush. Although I need a console to play it on, I don't have one. Oh sweet, cameraman, you actually came prepared! This is what I'm paying you for, you're getting a fucking raise! Sweet! Now we can begin! Sonic Rush. This has to be one of the most criminally underrated Sonic games ever. So, this is actually a really good way to shed some light on it for some people who may not know more about it. Now, it may just look like a normal Sonic game on the front, but this has to be one of my personal favorite Sonic games. Easily probably in the top 10. Now, for a level like that, it may seem like I have some extremely fond memories of this game. But, to be all honest, I just barely played this game last year. And it's what brought me into the Sonic franchise as a whole. Now, after 2017 and the whole debacle that was Sonic Forces, I pretty much just stopped caring about the Sonic franchise as a whole, as of course, no new games coming out, why the hell should I care? But then, a sparking glimmer of hope came as the Sonic movie came out, and it was really, really good. And so because of this, I actually got into the spirit of playing Sonic again, I started thinking about the franchise more and more, and so I thought, if there's one game that I haven't played yet, it's Sonic Crush. Why don't I actually check it out after all this time? So, I played it, I loved it, I loved everything about it, because this game has the embodiment of Sonic and the Sonic in it, and therefore, it brought me full force into the giant Sonic fan that I am today. But why is it so good? You have to think to yourself, what makes this game as good as it is? So, why don't we take a look? This game was developed in collaboration by Sonic Team and Dimps, the same guys who previously made the Sonic Advance series. It was released on November 15th, 2005 for the Nintendo DS. In fact, it was actually the same exact day that Shadow the Hedgehog came out, and while that game would be a big pile of trash that we don't talk about, the other game released on that day would be actually good. While we already know at this point what the critics thought about that game, on the other hand, critics really liked this game for the fun gameplay and good graphics for the DS hardware. And it sold really well too, as the game would end up getting a sequel in 2007, and two standalone sequels that are only Rush games in gameplay alone. Even in what's now known as the Dark Ages of Sonic, the only games that consistently had great reviews were the handheld games developed by Dimps, this being one of them. Now, this game is important to the series that it would be the very first game in the franchise to use what is now known as the Boost Formula. A gameplay style that is so good that it's still being used as the standard gameplay style to this very day. The second would be the introduction of Blaze the Cat, as this was her very first appearance, and she would become a fan favorite and a series mainstay up until the 2010s, where she just got pushed aside just like every other Sonic character at the time, and has only shown back up in the Olympic Games games and that racing game that no one even cared about or bought. I mean, she didn't even show up in Sonic Forces. How did that even happen? Does she just have better things to do with her time? Well, whatever. We'll talk more about her later in this review. And while on the subject of that, I might as well get into how this review will be structured. Now, I will be splitting up my thoughts into six separate categories. Control and game feel, graphics, story, overall game design, soundtrack, and extra content and replay value. So, with all that under the way, let's jump in right into the first one, control and game feel. As I've said before, this game revolves around the boost formula. Now, in a standard old Sonic game, you would just hold right and jump to get to the end. Very simple, very basic. Fortunately, this isn't your granddad, Sonic the Hedgehog, as Sonic has been introduced to a brand new thing never before seen called the Y button. 
Yes! What does the Y button do? Well, the moment you press it, Sonic takes a giant boost of speed and starts taking off super, super fast. Now, I'll let you know that you can't do this forever, as you have what's called the tension gauge on this side, which will decrease the longer you boost. Well, gasp! How do I refill the gauge, then? Well, then why don't I introduce you to the coolest mechanic, even cooler than the boost mechanic, the trick system. Basically, once you're up in the air, and you press the opposite button to the button you last pressed to jump, and look at that, Sonic did some sweet tricks. You can continue doing this until you hit the ground, and look at that, those tricks help refill your tension gauge. And if you're in a place where you're not high enough to do enough tricking, destroying enemies also helps fill the gauge. It's this constant engaging system of boosting to having to do more tricks, which results into doing more boosting, which leads to more enemies, which leads you to do even more boosting. I mean, you are already this engaged doing all of these decisions in something that doesn't even come from the level design. Either way, that still isn't even the final gimmick. This game takes place between two different screens. Woo! One moment you're up on the top screen, and the other, you loop down to the bottom screen. It can be a little weird, and it's honestly kind of gimmicky, but I honestly really like it, and I think it's just really cool on a technical level how they were able to accomplish it. I mean, how many other DS games can you think of where they do a similar thing, where they both use simultaneously both screens constantly? Not a lot, I bet. Well, anyways, other than running, jumping, boosting, and tricking, Sonic also has a few other moves up its sleeve. Er, well, he doesn't have any, but anyways, of course, Sonic also has his classic spin dash, but weirdly, he has the homing attack from the 3D games. This is a weird addition, but I honestly don't really mind. It's not terribly forced like in Sonic 4, it's just sort of there, and it helps out with some weird jumps, and you need to correct yourself. And if you're a purist and you don't like it, then you pretty much don't really even have to use it. Although what's weirder is that you don't just press the A button twice, the move is mapped to the R button. But either way, when there isn't an enemy around and you press the R button, Sonic does a cool little air dash. I like it, I mean it doesn't really do anything, but I think it's pretty cool. Now that we're on the subject of controls, I should bring up that Blaze is also a playable character in this game. Similar to Tails and Knuckles in the classic games, she plays similar to Sonic, but with slight differences that make her different. If not, maybe she's a bit too similar. Instead of the homing attack, she has a hover boost, which if anything is even more helpful with correcting jumps. The only other different move that she has is her double jump, which you can do by pressing R while holding up. To be fair, Sonic can also do this, but it's extremely small, and it doesn't really help or do anything. Blaze, on the other hand, gets a ton of air, and with this, she can access different alternate paths compared to Sonic. Well, other than that, the control and game feels really well executed. Nothing feels slippery or imprecise. It feels perfectly how Sonic should feel like in a classic Sonic game. But it has enough extra gameplay moves and mechanics that make it more than just a Sonic game. It's perfect, and I wouldn't want it any other way. Now, the graphics. Well, you've been looking at them for a few minutes at this point, so I'll try to be short here. The game is shown in a 2.5D art style, where the main character models are 3D, but everything else is 2D. You've probably seen this from New Super Mario Bros., or a reverse example of this would be Klonoa. I really love the character models for Sonic and Blaze. I mean, I don't know. Something about low poly models I just really like, but I think it's mainly the feeling of how even when you have such a low poly model, it still somehow perfectly has the embodiment of Sonic in it. I mean, look at this thing and try to tell me how it isn't Sonic. You can't, because this is Sonic right here, and all this pixelated DS glory. The 2D artwork is also really great too. It's very similar to that of the Sonic Advance games, which makes perfect sense because it was made by the same team, but either way, everything is super distinguishable from each other, and the vast, colorful environments are easy to tell apart. And so that's what easily makes the graphics clear. The technical form of the DS back in the day, and to this day, they still look damn good. Now, anyways, on to the story. The story begins on your classic Sonic vs. Eggman, whereas Sonic is just normally being Eggman's plans that he always does. A strange emerald, unlike a Chaos Emerald, appears. 
but before he can do anything about it, a mysterious figure appears before him. Enter Blaze the Cat, a completely new original character with new abilities never before seen. But before Sonic could say a word, she's already off somewhere else. Soon enough, Sonic meets up with Tails to talk about what the hell just happened, and we end up figuring out that apparently there's literally a tear in the space-time continuum, as the world Blaze comes from is colliding with Sonic's world. And so Sonic and Tails venture forth to collect the Chaos Emeralds, as well as stop a brand new villain, Dr. Eggman Nega. He's just like Eggman, except from Blaze's dimension, and I think also from like 200 years in the, in the future? I, I don't understand what's up with him, but who cares, it's just Eggman. And since I already spilled the beans, it looks like it's now time to talk about Blaze's side of the story. Yeah, her campaign is entirely different from Sonic's, with a whole other story to get into. So she's essentially Sonic from a parallel dimension, where she is a princess as well as the guardian of the Soul Emeralds. So essentially a mix of Sonic and Knuckles, and as it says in the name, Blaze has the power to manipulate fire. So we start off Blaze's story with her waking up in a place she doesn't recognize, and the last thing she can remember is being engulfed by a white light. I really feel like I can make a joke here, but I'm going to refrain myself from doing so. Well, as we know, she's actually in Sonic's dimension, and recognizing the danger at hand, she ventures off to defeat Eggman and collect the Soul Emeralds in order to fix the world all completely by herself. Now, Blaze as a character is very formal, she doesn't talk much, and while she seems completely calm on the surface, she's usually just concealing some deeper emotion. And in this story, she is absolutely determined that she can do everything by herself without the need of any friends. Now, Blaze actually meets up with some of the Sonic cast, and it's just really cool seeing these characters interact, as most of them have very opposite personalities from Blaze. And so naturally, she just had to meet up with Cream the Rabbit, the absolute nicest, sweetest person ever in the Sonic cast. And while most of the story, Blaze is reluctant to keep her along the journey, she just keeps her along due to the main fact that she has absolutely no idea where she is. And so while Blaze just acts like Cream is a tour guide, they develop an actual friendship by the end, and near the end of the story where Cream's life is at stake in the whole universe debacle, you can really tell that she actually cares. And so the stubborn Blaze from the beginning has now become a much nicer person, who learns it's perfectly okay to have friends and rely on others at times. And so because of this, she finally ends up teaming with Sonic in an ultimate confrontation that I really love but I won't talk about because of spoilers. An absolutely amazing story with well-written characters that feel like real people. A story that isn't too dark but can still take itself seriously at times, good moral lessons for the children, and is overall what I feel a Sonic story should be handled. I absolutely love Sonic's characterization in this game. He acts perfectly how classic, modernish Sonic should act. He brings forth a ton of moral lessons while still keeping his trademark attitude. Now here's the big one, the one that truly matters. What's with the level design? And if you thought absolutely spectacular, then you would actually be a little bit wrong. Let me explain from the beginning. Now the game is split up in two separate parts, the Sonic campaign and the Blaze campaign. And once you beat both of them, then you unlock the final story segment. And despite the stories and characters being different, they both actually share the same levels. It's just that they're played in a different order depending on who you're playing. I don't mind this at all, as the game is so fun and not too long that I'm fine playing it again. Plus, when you play as Blaze, you can actually go on completely separate alternate paths like I said before. So, it really is kind of a different experience. So the game is split up in your classic Sonic fix of two acts and a boss at the end. There are seven different areas to explore, and each of them are very distinct from one another. In standard Sonic fashion, every zone has a specific stage gimmick that makes them unique. All of them have something fresh to bring to the table, so it never feels like you're just playing the same thing, just with a different skin. Other than that, the boss stages are actually completely different from the main gameplay, as they are played in these locked 3D environments with cool 3D bosses. And the last gameplay style are the special stages you play to get the Chaos Emeralds. And man, I just have to say right off the bat, these have to be one of the best, hell if not the best special stages in the entire Sonic series. Yes, it's the Sonic 2 Halfpipe, but it's controlled using the stylus instead of a controller, giving you a level of control that is completely unmatched by a controller. And that makes this a Sonic 2 Halfpipe that's actually fun. I know, it's crazy. 
Since you have to use this new control style, the special stages have a big emphasis on using quick reflexes to avoid things. Not only that, but there's a genius way of getting into the stages too, as all you have to do is find one of these generators in the stages, and then boost through them. No finish the stage with 50 rings or any other stupid entrance requirement. These special stages are no nonsense, and that's what I love about them. And what's great is that you only have to play these for the Sonic campaign and not the Blaze campaign. A great idea, as now I don't have to play 14 special stages just to get to the final ending. Now anyways, here's the boss stages. Now you can't boost in these, and while it seems weird that they would just take out a central gameplay mechanic, in all reality, it's for the best, as you don't really need to boost in these. And well, I mean, they're alright, I guess? The main problem with these is that they're usually just too simple and repetitive, and go on for far too long. Hell, one of the bosses is literally just a reskin of another boss, but worse. They did it before Sonic Colors made it cool. But yeah, to defeat the bosses, you need to hit them 8 times like in the Genesis games. And man, I just feel like 8 is way too much. I mean, where do we draw the line on what to change about the classic Sonic formula? I mean, I feel like these would just work a lot better if they were shorter, but overall, there's still some fun to be had with them, as they aren't downright bad or anything, just kinda weak. And now we come to the level design itself, and well, yeah, it's pretty good, you could say. This game definitely has the first game curse, where the level design isn't bad in this game, but I feel it's definitely gotten better in the sequels. There are a lot of moments where I feel like I'm not really in control, and all I'm doing is just holding down the boost button. And overall, the level design left me feeling a bit mixed on whether I liked it and thought it was absolutely brilliant, or just kind of flawed. But I just gotta say to myself, did I enjoy the core gameplay of the game? And in the end, I said yes, because the core gameplay mechanics were great, even if the level design isn't a 10 out of 10. So yeah, it's not 3D Mario levels of amazing game design, but it's still really good, as it's got your classic Sonic style of level design that works so great. But if there's one thing that people complain about on the level design, is bottomless pits. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not like I encountered zero bottomless pits in the game, but I feel like the internet shits on it way more than it actually happens. The most it'll happen on a playthrough is just like three times, and even then it's not even that much of a big game-breaking deal that people make it out to be. Just don't get into the zone too much and go tricking off a ledge if you don't know where it ends up to. I mean, I think you pretty much should be fine. And that's the level design. Even though you could say that the future boost formula games expanded and got much better with the level design, that still doesn't mean that this game's level design is bad. Oh, not at all. I mean, there's still a reason the boost formula has stayed for so long. The core gameplay is genuinely fun, and you get a great sense of the thrill. And even when games after it improved and added more and more to the formula, you can always go back to the one that started it all and have a great time. Now for the soundtrack, and oh my freaking god, I finally get to talk about this game's soundtrack. The soundtrack was composed by Hideki Naganuma, who previously did the soundtracks for Jet Set Radio, and who knew that his style would be a perfect fit for the series? Look, I love Jun Tsunoue's work on the series, and his sound is the sound of Sonic, but hot damn, sometimes you just gotta put the butt rock away and get some funky fresh beats instead. I mean, I don't even know what you want me to say here, you've been listening to the soundtrack this entire review. If you found out you loved it, you already did, and if you didn't, then you're a disgrace! I mean, come on. Right There, Right On, Back to Back, I mean, these are some of the most iconic Sonic tracks here. Hell, Right There, Right On is in Super Smash Bros for crying out loud. And holy shit, Wrapped in Black has to be one of my favorite Sonic tracks, period. Easily in the top five. If there's one thing you can take away from this entire review, it's to just go on YouTube and enjoy the perfection that is Wrapped in Black. Oh yeah, I also gotta mention that Hideki is an internet funny Twitter man who does pretty funny stuff there, so yeah, you should also follow him there if that's the second thing to take from this. An outstanding soundtrack for some of my favorite songs in the entire Sonic franchise. Hideki Naganuma really outdid himself with this one. The final category is extra content and replay value, and I gotta say, this game is pretty lacking in that department. For extra content, there's a two-player battle mode that you can play via DS download play. I mean, it's kinda neat, I guess. Seems like it would've been fun back when this game was so relevant, 
but it's overall pretty useless nowadays unless you happen to be friends with another gaming nerd with a DS and a copy of Sonic Rush that so happens to be down to play. Even though at that point, you'd probably just be better playing Sonic Adventure 2 Battle or something. Oh, and after we beat the game, you also unlock a time trial mode and a sound test. Absolutely riveting. I can't imagine all the possibilities. Oh yeah, the game also has a ranking system, where at the end of each level, the game ranks you depending on how much points you got. This is actually the first game that has S as a final ranking. Before, it would only go up to A, but S rankings would just be normal from this point on. Oh yeah, I also gotta mention that there's absolutely no bonus for getting all the S ranks. Just great. And I mean, I can't be too hard on it. It's a 2005 DS game, but overall, that's all of the extra content that it has. I have to admit, this game was a bit lacking on the extra content and replay value side. It's only about as much as the Genesis game, where you just are meant to play again and again and get faster and faster. But overall, this game doesn't really need extra content or replay value or achievements or anything about that. Because the game is so good on its own that it doesn't need more extra filler content to make it mean any better. But, and so, that was Sonic Rush. Final thoughts, I still think this game is really great. I feel everyone should pick it up. It's an excellent starting point if you want to get into the Sonic franchise. And while it may be a bit lacking some improvements, mainly due to the fact that Sonic Rush Adventure and Sonic Colors DS have better level design, but Rush Adventure had a lot of things slowing the game down and making it a worse experience, and Colors DS completely got rid of the trick system. So if you want a true, original, boost formula experience, Sonic Rush is still the way to go. Alright, so, um, I mean... Excellent game review. I really enjoyed it. But it seems as if you still haven't figured out the true meaning and moral lesson from this game. Is it the main moral lesson of the game on how it's okay to rely on others at times and how you should have good relationships with your friends? Hmm. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. It's all for you to figure out yourself. Even so, with this review, you have proven yourself worthy as a good quality game reviewer. Now open the game and take out the documentation. There's a little something on the back. Ha, oh, sweet. It's another one of these clues. Remember, kid, whenever you don't know what to do, you all just have to flip your life around just like the game case and the answer will always be there for you. Wait, are you serious? Uh, I don't know, I just kind of made that up right now. But the point still stands very true. Well, thanks, Wall of Doom. Even though I'm gonna go on to bigger and better adventures, I'll always remember the beginning of the story. Now venture forth into the unknown, and face your fears into a new adventure. Epic! Guess I might as well just check out that note. Powerful demeanor could start a war. He'll tear down the building just to pass through the door. Look up, look all around you. He won't be done until he's through. What? Wait a minute! You must have something to do with that pipe bomb explosion, do you? Say something! Chaos control! Wow. Wait a minute. If I'm experiencing that cutscene again, then. Oh, God! Don't move! Stay where you are! Keep your hands up in the air! Mother of God! 